Hey, I'm Joel Jameson. And I'm Howie Clark. And on this week's episode of Eight Weeks Out TV, we're going to talk about why most boot camps suck. Hey, today I'm in Lexington, Kentucky, otherwise known as BFE, with Jim Laird and Molly Galbraith of J&M Strength and Conditioning. How are you guys doing? Great. Doing great. Good. Um, the reason I came and wanted to talk to you guys is you just released a product, Boot Camp in a Box, and I'm kind of on the record as not being the biggest fan of boot camps, um, but obviously I contribute to this product. So I wanted to take this time to just introduce you know, what you guys do differently than most boot camps and how you approach group training and uh, you know, advice you have for, for people looking to you know, have that revenue model where they're training more than one athlete or one client, but able to tailor it towards, you know, more towards the individual than just kind of the throw everybody in a box and see what happens. So uh, maybe Jim, you can tell us a little bit about you know, what your philosophy is here and sure. uh, you know, how you guys approach training groups. Sure, the biggest thing is I was looking around um, the industry at, at different uh, group training programs and most of the people that come to me to work out, they're, when you actually get to the root of why they're there, it's because they wanna look good and feel good. And I've kind of figured out, um, I've been training people here in Lexington since 2001, and the key to making people look good and feel good is strength training. So what we've done is we, we created a group class that's more strength training biased, uh, based on te teaching people how to hinge and how to squat properly and how to get their scapula working right. And then we just basically, progress from there, get them moving well, and then just basically develop like a strength and conditioning program. So we're using the boot camp to bring people in because that's really the popular modality, but we're really really bringing them into a strength training program more like what I would do with a personal training client. Sure, and then you guys work together in the classes. I'm assuming you guys both, do you guys both teach the same classes? Or do you alternate, or how does that work? How do you guys work together? Well, Jim's been kind of my training mentor for the last nine years, and then about three years ago, I started working with Mike Robertson of Indianapolis Fitness and Sports Training, and um, he's had a lot of influence kind of on the way that we run our group classes. Um, Jim knows a ton about strength training, uh, but what I think Jim would agree, what Mike did for us was really teach us um, how the body's supposed to move and where you're supposed to get mobility and stability. Um, we offer 23 classes a week, um, Jim and I teach together for the most popular ones. Um, there's typically between eight and probably 15 to 20 people per class, um, but with two instructors, and especially with all the experience Jim has, we're really able to modify things on the fly for someone. So, for example, if we're doing you know, a squat and then some kind of anterior core movement and some kind of row movement, we can say, okay, you're brand new, you're gonna be squatting off a box, you know, you're more intermediate, you're gonna be goblet squatting, you're more advanced, you're gonna be you know, doing a double, double goblet front squat, you know, you're new, you're doing a band pull apart, someone who's more advanced may be doing an interval inverted row or a chin up, and we just kind of modify everything on the fly um, based, based on that. What, what kind of, like, someone comes to you new, what kind of an assessment do they get as they walk in the door? How do you classify them as where they need to be in the, in the group setting? Well, we basically score everyone a zero, because that's until they prove to me otherwise, because that's what I found most people are. And we start with the general warm up, and then we start with basically teaching them how to, how to squat. And if they can't squat properly, they're squatting off a box. And then we basically are teaching them how to brace their core, and then we go from there. I start basically with everyone as a zero, and then build them up from zero. And if they should demonstrate to me that they are not a zero, then I will give them something that's at their level. That's what I was gonna say. They kind of have to earn the right to do the more advanced movements. Um, like Jim said, people come in. Um, we do a group orientation every Saturday at one. So anyone who's ever interested in coming to our class, um, they can show up. We can talk to them a little bit about what we do, what their goals are, and that's a really good time for us to determine not only if um, you know we're a good fit for them or to try to sell them on what we do, but also to find out if they're a good fit for us. Because we found that if you bring people into your program who aren't a good fit for you, it's a lot of headache for you and it's a lot of headache for them. So we sit down, spend about 30 minutes chatting with them, figuring out what their goals are, um, telling them what we do, and then we run them through kind of our dynamic warm-up and Jim's an absolute master at assessing people on the fly and saying okay well they're having some hip problems here they're having some shoulder problems here and again we start them off with the most basic things and then as they earn the right um, to do the more advanced things then we can progress them we also as part of that as someone has a lot of issues we put them in small group training where they can get more individual attention so we kind of weed them out and and go from there as well yeah, and if they have major problems then we just refer them out to someone else a physical therapist or something like and, that and everything we do is an assessment you know, everything from the warm up to when they walk in the door. We're constantly assessing, you know, what their needs are. 
what types of clients you guys see generally? What's your your bread and butter, who, who's your average client that walks in the door? Uh, believe it or not, 99.9% of my clients are female. Um, and they just want to look good and feel good. They're exhausted from trying every different type of, you know, class, group exercise class. They're doing cardio every day. They're starving themselves to death. Um, that's pretty much the majority. I mean, I train professional athletes and, and all that sort of thing as well. But the bread and butter of, of my clientele and now our clientele is, is, is women. And what's, what's just the, the difference? What do you think the mentality is that you guys offer that gets people in the door versus you know, the typical boot camp or the typical large group? How do you guys differentiate yourselves? Because there's so many of them out there, right? There's a million boot camps, there's CrossFit, there's all this crap out there that... Results over a long period of time with, with less work. And then teaching. Teaching, it's a more of a cognitive process. We're actually teaching them why we're doing stuff. The process of training, we're getting them to understand about stress management and recovery as opposed to just wearing them out. And we basically scare the people away that just want the crap beat out of them. And we, we kind of re-educate them and they go, oh, I really don't have to train. I can train two or three days a week and look good and feel good for the rest of my life. Well, and like I was saying earlier, the orientation, that's when we really start the education process. And we start saying, um, our training's gonna be a little bit different. It might be different than what you've done before, but this is why we're doing it. And we, we go through and explain, you know, um, this is how we view the hu human body. This is where you're supposed to be getting movement. This is where you're supposed to be stable. And as we're putting them through the dynamic warm up, we can say, hey, see, look, see how you're collapsing right there? That's not good. And that might be contributing to the issues that you're having here or there. Um, we also like to say, anybody can make you tired, not anybody can make make you better and um, we build a lot of our clientele off of referrals like Jim said he's been training people here in Lexington for almost 12 years so many of his clients he's had for that amount of time and they say yeah you know I, I, I got this body from two hours a week with training with Jim Laird so and then also when you train women when you get results with them they talk and they bring their friends so that's a you know if you get success with with ladies especially if you can get them to look good and feel better um, you know they're gonna tell their friends now let's talk just logistically. I mean, we, uh, we were working on getting some HIV going into classes and being able to monitor sure. readiness. I mean, just from a logistical standpoint, when you're in a class, right. how are you guys making changes on the fly based on, you know, based on HIV or based on what you see in the class? Right. What are you doing to manage a class while you're going through it? I'm just watching the way they move. I'm watching their, their, their posture, their, their, their uh, body language. I can tell if somebody's not having a good day and I can go over and talk to them and be like, hey, what's going on, you know? Um, <clears throat> and then also, I'm looking at movement and I'm looking at there's some things that you know I really can't explain I'd have to show you but there's some things I'll accept in a movement that are like okay and then there's a certain point where they're doing more damage than good and I just cut them off at that point or I regress them to uh, I mean we have one lady that comes in here she can deadlift 90% of the time but about once every five weeks she can't hold a neutral spine to save her soul like you could put her kid in front of her and put a gun to his head <laughs> and she couldn't do a neutral fight. So on that day, we just do something else with her. We might do some half kneeling stuff. So I'm constantly watching what's going on and you'll have people come in and they'll just be like defeated and be like, walk over and go, what's going on? Well, you know, my, my dad died, you know, yesterday. Oh, well, okay. So we need to kind of back off. Why don't you just do half of the workout today and then come back when you're feeling better, you know? So we're constantly watching our clients and talking to them. You know, we, you know, I introduce myself to everybody when they come in the door and kind of get a feel where we're, what's going on with them. Well, and so much of it comes back to the education, like I was just discussing. Um, you know, generally people come in, they foam roll, we'll have them do a little bit of breathing, we put them through a dynamic warm up, and then if it's a strength day, we usually have, you know, two or three strength based exercises that they're doing um, that they'll go through a circuit of and then they'll do some more. But we say, hey guys, you're doing three to four sets of, you know, eight to 10 reps or whatever. And they know that if they're not feeling so hot, they, they're well versed enough in the way we train and what they're supposed to do with their body, they might back it off and only do two sets or back it off and do three and they also know how to they've learned based on things that we've told them how to change things for themselves on the fly if they're doing an inverted row and they're supposed to get eight reps if they get to five and it's not looking pretty they're going to walk their feet back a little bit so that you know they're they're lifting less weight and they're and they're able to maintain good form so it, it all comes back to education with your clients great and i know you guys have to go teach class soon so let's wrap things up and just uh, real quick let's talk about the product boot camp in a box you guys sure. just released it you know, what can people expect to, to see in there? I mean, obviously I've contributed and you've got some other top guys in there. Let's, let's you know, talk about the product, tell people what they can get out of it. Well, it, it basically we've brought a, really, a lot of really good people in on it yourself. We've got Rob Wolf talking about how he deals with lifestyle and nutrition issues in his gym, NorCal Strength and Conditioning, and they've been really successful at transitioning from a CrossFit gym into a gym that's more just about keeping people healthy and looking good. And the people that want to do performance stuff, then they're able to take those people and, and do that. 
Um, and then Mike Robertson, the progressions, the regressions, the movement, uh, the quality of the movement, where people should be getting your movement from, and then our training philosophy. And then we also have a, a, a great upsell, Sean Croxton's The Dark Side of Fat Loss, where he explains how getting healthy is the key to losing fat, not just wearing people out. So it's really a complete education for trainers and coaches on how to, and Molly does a really good, Molly wrote the whole manual, because obviously I can't write or spell. Um, and actually the whole, the whole idea came from Mike approached Molly about a blog post that she was writing and it became about our classes and it became so, uh, Molly kind of <laughs> goes on and on and on. Oh, and really? It, and I go was, on and on and on? And, it, and at that point, the article was so extensive that she's like, why don't we just turn this into a product? And Michael's like, great idea. So um, the whole idea that the product was hers, and um, it's just a complete education on how to, and some of the mistakes we've made and seen others make. You know, if you're obviously running a class, a boot camp, where you're just wearing people out, we need to transition into the slowly. You can't go from, like, right. you know, P90 or over exercising someone you can say P90X. okay you can't go from p90x to you know roll foam rolling and and talking about meditation in like a week you've got to like bring some of this stuff in at certain times and 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 bring people in slowly and, well we get a lot of questions about you know um people find out what we do with our clients and they say how how are your clients happy with that how do you how do you compete with the crossfit and the p90x and the insanity and all these crazy other programs and again it, it all comes back to education and so in the manual it allows you to actually get kind of get in our brains and figure out not only how do we program i mean jim wrote six months of done for you programming so um when you Buy the manual. Which you just can, about killed me, by the way. Which just about killed you, yeah. It just about killed me editing it, but um, <laughs> you got six True. months six months of done for you pro programming, so you know exactly what to do with your clients from the get go. And then it allows you to kind of get in our brains and see, you know, how do we program for our classes? How do we progress? How do we regress? There's a section on there about progressing people and regressing people. It's not always based on their ability. Sometimes it's based on your ability to coach or not coach. There are times that someone might be squatting and I might not, might not be able to cue that person on how to do their squat properly. And if I don't have time to spend with them, then I just need to regress them. When you're in a group model, it's not just about um, the person's ability. Sometimes it's about the amount of time you have, your ability to, to cue or coach them on that day. Um, and we also talk about ways that you can progress them, you know, decreasing stability, adding load, adding volume, all these different things. And we explain how to do it in a group setting. And like Jim said, we also explain how to take people from, um, from what they might be doing now and how to slowly integrate them into doing something more holistic like what we do. And then also what to do if all of a sudden everybody decides to bring a friend on the same night. I mean, it's happened before. So we've got some things in there. What can you do to keep the people that have been coming happy? you know, challenge them enough, but to keep the, you know, don't kill the beginners, you're by yourself, and all of a sudden 30 people show up. Oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? We've got some little tricks in That's there. That's a how wall, to, wall sit and prowler kind of day, you know, yeah, easy we, to we've coach. Got, and yeah, and so, you know, you still get people, still get what they want, but they're safe and they're, they're you know, so there's ways in there that, the, for us to kind of share some of the tricks that I've learned over a long time on how to deal with, you know, being a strength coach at a Division One level, you've got situations that just jump up or at high school level, no weight room today, you've got 50 athletes, what do you do? You know, sure. that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the stuff that I picked up over the years. Yeah, like I said, I really appreciate the way that you guys approach, you know, training groups, but with an individual approach and, and the way you're paying attention to detail, I think is something that a lot of boot camp people need to pay more attention to and uh, you know, I think people can learn a lot from the products. So why don't you guys mm -hmm. tell everybody where they can find more about both of you and where they can find the product. Oh, go first. Mine's gonna go for a while. So oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm obviously on Facebook and Twitter and then uh, I have a blog called Where Performance and Health Collide um, and that's where I basically do some training updates and answer questions and that sort of thing. I've got my personal blog, mollygalbraith.com. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. Again, just Molly Galbraith. And um, I've got Girls Gone Strong, www.girlsgonestrong.com. Um, and then we've got j-mstrength.com, which is our, uh, our website for our gym. People can find you there, everything there? Sure, you can get there. And I think the Boot Camp in a Box is uh, bootcampinabox.com. Box. <laughs> yeah. no, that's real original. Good job. <laughs> it is. Thanks. You thank Mike Robertson for that one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for uh, coming on. Thanks for having me out here. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. it. took uh, several hours and overnight trips to get out to the middle of nowhere, but uh, yeah. it's good to be here and see you guys working on the new gym and I'm excited to see the uh, future. It's yeah, a work in progress. Too. Yeah, thanks. Thanks yeah. for having us. All right, and welcome back. And you know, Howie, we started the show out talking about why most boot camps suck, um, but I think Jim and Molly showed us very well why they don't necessarily have to suck. 
Yeah, they, you know, just the way they go about it is definitely the right way. You can tell by listening to them talk um, and some of the cues they look for in their clients that they really do care about each and every person that walks through their gym and uh, they want them to get the results they want. And it's not about just burying somebody Absolutely. And, and, and having them be super sore the next day and feeling like they did something. You know, they, they want to get them coming back. And like Jim said, you know, sometimes they bring friends and he's got 30 people that he's got to make stuff up on the fly. And it's, uh, it, it's just a very uh, thoughtful way to go about it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the biggest difference is Jim and Mahler are thinking about the long term. They're not just thinking about crushing people each workout. They're thinking about the long term results. And, and getting their clients results is really what's going to keep them coming back over the long run, not just, uh, you know, for a week or a month, but, you know, six months in a year. We're starting to see, I think, some of those boot camps are, are fading out because there's just so much turnover. And the, the next model, the evolution, I think, of uh, the fitness industry is being able to deliver good results to a large number of people. And that requires, uh, you know, technology. It requires caring about the athletes and the clients you work with and not just trying to crush them. Yeah, you know, just and that's how HRV fits in so well is, is they're willing to have different types of training for who's ready to train that yep. day. And, you know, and, and some people, uh, they may overestimate their fitness. And like Jim said, everyone who walks through the door is a zero. And, and that's a great way to look at it. I mean, not if you're the client that's expecting something or if you expect your levels of fitness are higher, but there's always room to grow. And, uh, you know, he's just looking out for them and, and both of them. And I think they do a great job. Absolutely. And we'll be talking more about how to you know, get more out of your group training uh, coming up on next episode eight weeks out. So in the meantime, uh, make sure and like our video. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash eight weeks out. And we are having a contest for a uh, free BioForce HRV system. If you join us there, uh, you can find me on Facebook as well. Just facebook.com slash Joel Jameson or uh, twitter.com slash Joel Jameson. And make sure to join us at eightweeksout.com for more videos, uh, more episode of eight weeks out TV coming soon.